Come on in, come on in, come on. Oh, y'all, come on in. It's another lesson, another day, y'all. It's another day, another day. Uh, I'm away. Yeah, we are getting ready to dig into the Sunday school lesson. For those of you who are there, give me a minute to sign in on Urban Broadcast Media. Uh, dot com so that we could uh, so that we could uh, get this ball a crack a lacking okay here we are hold on y'all hold on here we go three two Hello, everybody. So Walter at the So Walter Jones Show. I am he. It is Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Theology Thursday. It is the day we sit around the mic and talk about the Bible. The B I B L E. Man, that is the book for me. Oh, it is another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. I want y'all to rejoice and let us be glad in it. It is another topic uh, we have been uh, we've been studying out of the book of Daniel. Daniel, and we talked about the lion den, and we talked about the, the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. Well, I don't think we talked about the lion's den just yet. Uh, but trust me, if we're talking about Daniel, it's just uh, amazing to me how whenever we talk about the, the hear the name Daniel come across the pulpits, it's usually those two stories. And it's unfortunate that the only thing we know about Daniel Many of us who are, well, don't study the scriptures that much as lions and fire. And that's about it. Or we might talk about the Daniel fast. Just those three things. But there were some amazing things that Daniel, as being a major prophet of Saul, as it pertains to the end time, we call it the, the word is eschatology. And there are things that Daniel saw that will affect us, or that's affecting us now and will affect us further on. And those of us who will be left behind or for those of us who will be raptured up. And for those who are the, <coughs> uh, the 144,000, those are part of the uh, 12 tribes of Israel. Um, gosh, so much will be going on, and you can read about it in the wonderful book of Daniel. Today, well, though, we're coming out of chapter 9, all right? And this is the understanding of, of, of Daniel, and it's uh, some of the things that he say is quite familiar to possibly King David. Uh, we're coming out of Daniel chapter 9, 4 through the 8th verse, and we skip and go through 15 through the 19th verse. And this Bible truth, the topic is a prayer for an obedient faith. Uh, Daniel prayed to the Lord a prayer of confession, seeking forgiveness, mercy, and strength to obey. Now, this is something that uh, I think is quite important for us as Christians to abide by. Uh, and um, let's see what we can do with this. If you go to chapter 9, verse 1, uh, I don't have the right contacts in my eye, but I can see some of it. All right. And this is some of you who are Facebook Live, hopefully you can help us out with this lesson. Uh, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ah. Ahasuerus, all right, again, the eyes uh, of uh, the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of the reign, I, Daniel, so we know who's talking, understood by books the number of the years whereof uh, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And again, this is very important for those of you who are studying eschatology in time, um, which will help you understand the visions uh, that Daniel saw, uh, coupled with the visions that the uh, John uh, uh, on the, uh, the Mount, uh, uh, the, uh, while he was on the island of Patmos. And it'll help you understand how the scriptures come together, they interpret each other, uh, they are unified 
and many of the things that you may see in the Old Testament is revealed in the New Testament. So this is not nothing new for those of you who are Bible readers or students or, or scholars. Verse 3, now here is the intercession of Daniel, the intercession. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. These words here are familiar to us because when we read in the book of, uh, uh, let's see, I don't know, maybe Timothy, um, there is something that is given to us by the Apostle Paul in the writing of the letter to Timothy, a contemporary of the Apostle Paul, as he was explaining to him about how we should treat those in power, those in church, uh, those who are in, well, I guess you could say in political, those who are in politics. Uh, chapter 2 here, 1 Timothy chapter 2 says this, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions. Now watch this. I'll go back to Daniel. Look what it says. And I set my face upon the Lord to God to seek by prayers and supplications with fasting and sackcloth. So this is not something that should be just given to Daniel to do. This should be given to us to do as well because, again, when you go to 1 Timothy, it mentions prayers and supplications and giving thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. This is not just for David or Daniel. It's for us as well. So he did something that was custom for those who are Hebrews, because you see the word sackcloth, and they put ashes on. It is a sense of humility, and this is something that some of you still do today when you're going before the Lord. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandment. It is something when a man goes forth to talk to God in prayer and in supplication, what he does is he lets God know who God is in his life. Notice how Daniel talked to God. He recognized in front of God who God was to him. Jesus was asked by the disciples to teach us how to pray. And the first few words in the beginning of the prayer was our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, and he's what he's doing is he is kissing up or what we what what worship really is or praise is, but both in a sense because praise is the kissing up of and the worship is the bowing down of or just throwing yourself on the floor submitting yourself to that deity and that's what uh, Daniel is doing here he says I pray unto you Lord my God and made confession uh, the, and he called God great and dreadful that's not a bad word that's a compliment keeping the covenant and he reminded God of the covenant keeper he let him know like we do our natural fathers, when my sons and my daughters, when they want something out of me, they praise me. They tell me how good of a father I am. They remind me of the good deeds I've done for them, to them, before they ask me for any money. Uh-huh. And says, verse 5 says here, we have sinned, oh, confession, and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgment. This sounds very familiar. The reason why it sounds familiar is because this sounds like something King David did as well. When you go to, I don't know, maybe Psalms. Psalm, I'm sorry, I put an S at the end. 
I don't like when people do it and I don't want to do it either. But this right here is one of the greatest um, scriptures dealing with a contrite heart. And that is out of Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to thy uh, multitude, unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. There's the word again, transgression. But watch what David says here that is equal to what Daniel is saying here. David says, wash me thoroughly uh, from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sins is ever before me. So you notice that he recognized what he did instead of these sorrowful, these sorry more so uh, prayers that we give to God that, uh, you know, well, God, you know what I did. So I'm just telling you I'm sorry and uh, let's move on. That's the sorry. That's the same sorrowful uh, retraction that uh, H and M, the clothing people, gave when they put that young man, that young man in a in a in a, a, a piece of cloth that mentioned him being the, the pride of the monkeys, okay, or whatever it was, and their response and their letters of retraction to that. Well, uh, David and Daniel. And the Apostle Paul through Timothy, notice their words. They're using the same wording. And notice the, 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 the sin sincerity in it. He's, David and Daniel says, uh, here I am right here. And let me tell you what I did. As if God didn't know. God knew, but it is something out of the mouths of a man that shows God the love that this man or the contrite heart of a man. David says, for I acknowledge my transgression. Then he says, against, he said, against thee and thee only, I've sinned. I mean, who does that when they pray to God? Instead of saying, yeah, but somebody else did it, so that's why I, I did it, but God, go ahead, forgive me anyway, and you begin to blame other folks for your mess. Oh, man, it's just amazing how we do that. We'll, we'll refer back to David as the Elder Jones uh, finally arrived. Yes, mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, and uh, we at verse 5, Elder Jones mm. says, uh, we you have, fast. yeah, I know, uh, it's, it's only two verses before that. You know, listen, we have sinned, and ha he says, we have sinned. Yeah. He didn't say, I, he said, we. Mm -hmm. but we have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets. Mm. Uh-oh. That's a key right there. Yes, sir. We have to be, he, he's saying we haven't hearkened to those people, uh, thy servants, meaning God sent them. Yes. Which spake in my, thy name Ooh. to our kings. Ooh. He's giving a pecking order here as he's mm -hmm. praying to God, our princes and our fathers and to all the people of the land. Uh, stop the presence. Yes. That's kind of important, Elder Jones, mm. because Daniel is talking to God in wonderful, sweet communion and humility. Yes. And But he's telling God, I, I know who you set down here before mm -hmm. us. Mm. These prophets. Yeah, I still have a problem with them prophets. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm tell, I know you do. I know that. Just these, have a problem. You set these prophets here for me, mm -hmm. for us, because he says we. And then he says, and the prophets were for our kings. Yeah. What is the order of the kingdom back in this time of uh, antiquity, Ella Jones? What is the, what is the, wh who are the ones who kind of run the kingdom? Back then. I see prophets as one of them. Right. Well, the prophets were placed there to inform. Okay. But the king at any time could have the prophet's head cut off. That's true. If he, he could have him killed if he disagreed. Yeah. So, which is the reason why many of those prophets begin to speak the voice of the prophet and not the voice of God. Yeah. And I think that practice still stands today because many of our prophets don't speak the voice of God. They speak the voice of themselves. Yeah. Yes. And they may like God is listening mm. and that God has to bow down to what they say. But these king of uh, prophets, they represented God and God mm. alone. They mm. spoke in his name. Right. Now, God sent those prophets to warn the people because if you notice, prophets have not always been on the scene in the Old Testament. They came on the scene for a particular reason, and that was the voice, God's voice. What's God's voice? Or to give God's voice. 
to warn the people and let them know that you are in error, you are walking out of the order of God, and you shall receive punishment, and this is the punishment that you will receive if you do not return. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And God will send prophet after prophet after prophet uh, to warn them. And then he will send them to the king because, remember, Israel wanted a king, but God says no. Right. But since you insist, since you insist. <laughs> we, I'm going to let you get a king. But warning, Will Robinson, this king is going to make you do a whole lot of things you ain't going to approve of doing, but you wanted the king, you're going to get the king. Give you so the order is the king is the head man and everybody else is under him, but he will have a prophet. Sometimes the king would uh, ask the prophet, should they go to war? Mm -hmm. Because he wanted to know if he was going to win the battle. Mm. And if the prophet said, you are not going to win, then the king was like, ain't no sense in my going to the battle. We're not going to win. There's no sense in us losing out. Mm. And, but then again, many cases, the prophets, uh, you remember the story of Micah? Was mm. that Micah, the prophet? They mm. said, ah, he always prophesied bad stuff. Don't listen to him. But he was right in what he said. Mm -hmm. So that was the order of business of that day. However, I have a problem with this confession word. Mm. Confession. Yes. Uh, let's see, that's ver verse 4. Verse 4. He made my confession. Confession. And said, O Lord. Yeah. All right, well, help us out. Help us out, Be Donald. Because <laughs> <laughs> confession, the law is. Yes, yes. Because the word confession is the Hebrew word yada. Uh-huh, sure. And the Hebrew word yada is the word for praise. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. So yet, but D Daniel says he made his confession. Mm -hmm. Now, the word confession bears two separate meanings. Mm -hmm. One is, is it is the form of praise, or it is the Hebrew word yada for praise, which means to acknowledge who God is, acknowledge what God is, acknowledge his power, his authority, and so on and so forth. It means to speak the truth. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you just got a bad report from the doctor and the doctor says you're not going to live, all you have to do is yada God, confess God. Mm -hmm. Confess what? God, they said I'm not going to make it, but your word says by your stripes I am healed. Mm -hmm. That's confession. That's yada. On the other hand, uh, yada or this word confession also means to, to acknowledge personal sin, mm -hmm. which is unique. Because Daniel does both in this lesson. Yeah, he does. He's doing it both at the same time. Same time. But what is the first thing he does? He acknowledges He's God. That's what so I he yada, he goes right into praise of right. who God is mm -hmm. before he goes in part two yes. of the word praise. Aha. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. See, and I was, that's what I was, I was setting you up before you got here. Oh, son. yeah, I know. You just set her up. <laughs> <laughs> Now y'all see, boy, we we come from the same seed. Uh, yes, Lawrence sir. Jones, uh, uh, that's our father, Junior. by the way, Junior. Uh, <laughs> come from the same seed. See, we didn't we didn't practice this this lesson together. No, huh? sure didn't. I was I on didn't, the cab. Yeah, he was on the cab on the way here, mm -hmm. and I didn't even study the lesson. No, sure didn't. I, I ain't studied. You told me you didn't. I, I didn't. Uh, you didn't. Saints don't lie. On Saints Thursdays. don't lie on Thursdays. I don't think I was. So there. I'm going by like like y'all reading it right now. Mm -hmm. I'm reading it for the first time. <laughs> Pray my strength in the Lord, but. That's why I referred back to that, uh, David mm -hmm. in Psalms 51. Yes. And then I referred to 1 Timothy on how we should uh, pray for and be in supplication for leaders. That's right. He okay. told us. Now, we all, y'all all, uh, they all hate the president. Mm -hmm. I don't know which order I got right. Yeah. But they, they well, we, we still have to pray for them. I'm going there. We have to pray for them. And you mm -hmm. may not like this too. But as the president of the United States, we still have to respect that position. Yes, we do. We may not like the man. Right. But saints, don't find yourself walking out of order. There it is. Because you will find yourself walking out of God. Yep. I don't agree with the man. I don't care for him. I don't like him. But as a child of God, this individual, as we call president, was placed here. I'm a man given in the protocol. Mm -hmm. uh, the other day, I was at the judge's office. And regardless of whether I disagree or agree with him, I still have to respect him as your honor. Yeah, you better. Regardless of what he called him. Hey, kid, come on up here. Yes, your honor. Yes, your honor. You think I'm going to call him? What up, doc? Yeah, right. So that's all I'm saying. But look at something. 
You got your Bible has the word Lord in here twice in the verse four. Mm -hmm. Notice the spelling of both your Lords. I uh, verse four. Mm -hmm. Yep, I sure do. You I sure does. I see two types of spelling. Two types of spelling. Uh, uh, it's capitalized when the first comes. On All the cap, which is the word for Yahweh. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the other one, which is just the L, is mm -hmm. capitalized, which is the word for Adonai. And this is where he's praising. This is where he's praising. But look yes. how he said it. Now, he says, I pray unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. But when he addresses him, he calls him the small mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because the Jews did not want to use the all caps Lord, meaning Yahweh, mm -hmm. meaning the self-sufficient one, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is the name. That is the national name for the Hebrews. Said it last night. Yes, sir. Yeah. Every, I heard you from where I was. Come yeah, on, somebody. Said you said it a lot. Black and you're proud. Yes, I did. <laughs> so the, the, the thing is, is, number one, when we approach God, we have to know who we're approaching, mm -hmm. which it kills me in our worship. We ain't really worshiping God because God ain't even getting the news that we even have in church. Ooh. Because how we allegedly approach God, we approach God any old kind of way, but you won't approach the judge any kind of way. See, you're messing up, man. Yeah. So I look at this Hebrew word when, when, and, and really, they the ones who have the right to use this word. Now, in today's time, we try to impress people with the word Jehovah, but Jehovah was never really a word. It's still not a word. Was you on my show yesterday? Uh, no, I was thinking about it. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking about it. You know, they said something minds think alike. I think, yeah, the like minds. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was intelligent, man. But your answer is good. It's your show. We'll go with your answer. It was an intelligent answer. Right. So, but notice, because now, in, in, in verse 4, he starts out with my Lord. When you get ver further down, then he goes into our Lord. Mm. So right now he's making this thing personal. Sometimes you got to make this thing personal. But in my conclusion, my brother, when I look at the word prayed, mm. it is the word for to mediate. Mm -hmm. In other words, right off the bat, he's letting us know that he's given us an intercessory prayer. Mm. Because I don't think Daniel is old enough to have committed sin for him to be in this predicament. Okay. Because he was a child. He was a teenager. The Bible called him a child or children when they went into captivity. Mm -hmm. It's some 60-something, almost 70 years later. Now the same teenager, Daniel, is now about 80 years old. Because in about another year or so, this new king is going to put out a decree that they can go back to their land. Yes. And remember, they're going to be in this desolation for 70 years. Mm -hmm. Right. So I know Daniel makes a confession to personal sin, but yet Daniel really didn't sin. Mm -hmm. But I believe God judges Israel as one nation. Yes, sir. And he judged them as one man. Mm -hmm. So when Achan hid that ungodly curse, a cursed thing, in his tent, Joshua and them in the battle of Ai, I think it was, was losing the battle. And God, Joshua asked God, why? One man caused Israel to lose because God judged them as one nation. The church is not a nation, so God does not judge us as a nation. No, sir. Neither is your local church a nation. So just no. because one person done wrong, God is not going to judge the entire church. You 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 know you messed up right there. Oh yeah, I, I was born messed up. You messed up right there, sir. Uh, you see, yeah, because I've heard pastors say there is sin in the camp. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <clears throat> I'm looking in the mirror. Yeah, and he calls fear on the people of that body. Uh huh. All right. Uh huh. Fear and on so, them. And go ahead, go ahead. And so some of the people know who or. Uh, or uh, well, it's, it's usually not never just one person, right? Okay, right. right. So a lot of by you know what I'm saying. So, but a lot of people start pointing fingers. Mm -hmm. Who is it? Mm -hmm. And so you can throw uh, no uh, Jonah overboard, but that ship gonna still rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> because it ain't like that now. <laughs> See, Jonah is the, the, the reason why the ship was acting the fool. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and so back then, you're right. God judged. Uh, uh, he killed all those people because David took an unhealthy, an unlawful yes, census, and God was wiping out folk God for the actions of that that boy. That's right. Okay. He killed them all. So when he said, "If my people," mm -hmm. he was talking to them. Them only. 
only, mm -hmm. especially uh, as it pertains to Solomon and that whole building. Because of the, technically, we're not yeah. his people called by his name. No, no. Because the Jew has a relationship with God That's right. that we do not have. So we're not, we're not Christendom. Uh, according to Dr. Alvin. Carter. I will see Cartel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're not a Christendom. So we're not a uh, Christian. Is not a is not a territory. No, it's not. Mm. No, we are. It's not a place that we can go back to. No, we are the called out ones. The called out ones. Oh, that's what the word called out of Christendom land. <laughs> called out of all them lands. Uh oh. See, we've been invited by God into heaven. Oh, I see. So I we've see. been called out of the world. We're saying, I know some brothers stay in there or straddle the fence. Yes. Yeah. But we've been called out. And the word church means, Dr. Abronia Scott, the word church yeah. means to be called out and not yeah. necessarily the building. The building church, Dr. Uh, Abronia Scott Sr., the building <laughs> <laughs> is the assembling of the people. Ecclesia? The Ecclesia. Uh -huh. But the the actual word for church is the called out ones. The yeah. baptized believers in Christ called out of a world of sin into the world of salvation. We've been delivered and set free. I see. Yes. I see. So going back to your case about respecting the president, yes. David kept calling Saul King God's Saul. anointed. His anointed. But Saul kept trying to kill that boy. He kept trying to kill him, but Saul, David understood that Saul was still placed there by God. I see. What we refuse to look at is regardless how much you don't like an individual, mm -hmm. you still have to respect that position that they hold. Yes. Because that position that they hold may be ordained by God. So when this man came to David bragging, I killed the Saul. Mm -hmm. Remember? Yep. He said, well, how is it that you just so easily tell me that you killed the king? Yep. And David said, give me your sword mm -hmm. so that I can fall upon this man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and he fell on him. Yeah. Tripped and fell. Yeah. Oops. He, oops. Sorry, Doc. Yeah. Bad, Get up, bad. boss. Get up. <laughs> and, and that's our problem. I know we don't agree. There are people who don't agree with their pastor, but you still there. Leave. Leave. You have to stay there. Then you have to stay there. Yeah. You don't like America? Leave. Right. Now, I don't agree with the president. I don't care for him, but I still have to respect his office. That's right. all I'm saying. Yeah. God places sometimes i believe right now uh our president may be the direct punishment of god to this country i'm trying to keep saying it because of america has turned her back against god yeah. we put our focus our trust our love and we've pledged our allegiance to a man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. be he the pastor or the president of the United States, mm -hmm. we don't no longer look for God to support us. We look for people. And that's why people are dying of hunger, chasing a word, a prophetic word, mm -hmm. trying to get a word of how can I get free? How can I get loose? Rather than listening to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ah, boy, boy. Now, now look at what he said in this lesson. What did he said? He said, I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, the great, the great, the word great means large. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Large and significance. Yes. Daniel is saying, God, you're greater than Judah, Jerusalem, Babylon, Darius. You're greater than the situation. You're greater than everything. Right. So first of all, and then he uses the word dreadful. In our day and time, dreadful is not a good thing. Especially you if you here. say dreadful <laughs> dead. And That's, sometimes he's called terrible. Terrible, exactly. Those are king's words. Those are uh, biblical words. Sure. The word dreadful, another translation would be awesome. Right, that's right. Or it is the feeling of one that causes fear upon someone else. Uh -huh. And so uh, it, it, in the presence of God, we ought to be uh, uh, at all at his awesome power, uh -huh. at all at his presence, at all at his authority, at all at everything. I don't know how we're so loose with God like we grew up with him in, in grammar school. Yeah, we kick it with him. Yeah, exactly. That's my so, dude. <laughs> now, now look at what he does. He keeps covenant mm -hmm. and mercy to them who love him and who keep his commandment. Mm -hmm. Now, don't think you're going to walk with God and be a, take a benefit of his covenant if you ain't loving him. And Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said that, didn't he? So the proof of the pudding is uh, proving that you love God is keeping the commandments of God. He answered. He he said that three times. Yes, uh, sir. One guy. Yeah. In a sense. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, seven, verse uh, uh, 
I think it's verse 7 where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. Let me fix y'all here. All yeah, right. Fix it, fix uh, oh, Lord, righteousness. O oh Lord, oh Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, mm. but unto us confusion of faces. Means shame face. As at this day, uh, to the men of Judah mm -hmm. and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem mm -hmm. and unto all Israel mm -hmm. that are near and that are far off uh, through all the countries whither thou hast driven them. Driven them. Uh-huh. How'd they get there? Uh, they've been driven. Uber. Uber. Lipped. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. Because of their trespass that they may, that they have trespassed against thee. Uh-huh. Mm. Uh-huh. Because of their trespass, they trespass against you. You know what? Jesus, uh, Christ said a strange thing. What did he say? Uh, enemies, they don't, they don't like you, but it's really not about you. It's not. Yeah. If, if you're representing God, it's not that they don't yeah. like you. They like, they, they hate God. They hate the God in you. It's yeah. It's a God in you. It's a God, God in you. Yeah. That's if it's God in you. That's if it's God in you. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Because yeah, sometimes yeah. it's you misrepresenting God. Yeah, that's so true. You know? Uh, but, mm -hmm. but, but look what he, look, what? I, and I, I believe he says the men of Judah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I believe he talked about geographical location now. Yes, sir. Because the men of Judah are not in Judah now. They're in Babylon. Sure. So he's talking about the men of Judah who are in Babylon. Mm -hmm. And then he uses the term the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who are still in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Because when they come and take him, they don't take everything. They leave the poor. They leave the needy. They leave all of that so you can have a little bit left. So every now and then they can come back and take some more stuff. Right. So he's praying for the men of Judah, which is probably in Babylon. He's praying for the inhabitants of Jerusalem, which is there. Then he doesn't limit it to Judah. Now he petitions God for all of Israel. Mm -hmm. And then he says the ones that are near and that are far. Now, I believe it was God told Moses. He says to have the people to do what's right about me. If they don't do what's right about God, God said he would send them. He would scatter them throughout the country, throughout the Gentile nations, and then he will punish them by the Gentiles, but then later God will punish the Gentiles who punished his people. Right. So, but look at, a lot of times I hurt because of where we are, uh, and but we don't understand, sometimes we are where we are because of sin. True. Now here he says, they are far and they are near through all the countries whither thou hast driven them because of their trespass. Now the word trespass is is a sin. If you notice, he mentions in verse 4, verse 5, all these different sins. The word sin in verse 5 means to come short of. Mm -hmm. He used the word iniquity to do an evil deed. He used the word wickedly, which means to twist, to go wrong. And then he used the word rebel, which means to go against authority. And that's what a lot of the saints are doing when it comes to the president. That's five things of sin. Then he gets to verse 7. He used another word of sin, which is uh, the word trespass, which literally means to go out of your way to do what's wrong. In other words, you knew exactly what you was doing was wrong, but you still did it. Mm -hmm. And that's what he is praying for. In other words, uh, David, Daniel is saying, God, you innocent. Right. And everything that's going on with us, we're guilty. And I believe Daniel could have said, but Lord, I didn't do nothing. Why am I in this mess? Right. But he understood that God is righteous in everything that he does. Yep, and that's why he said, we did this. <clears throat> now, today, when the president, who represents the entire nation, mm -hmm. uh, whatever he do will either strengthen or weaken the entire nation Correct. through the eyes of other nations. Correct. So he has to be like a Daniel that's right. by saying, yeah, we, we messed up. Yeah. America. Yeah. So do any of the uh, ambassadors who leave here or onwards mm -hmm. to other nations like Clinton is an onward to Haiti, I think it is. When he goes over there, he still represents our country. Our country. Right. So if he slap a woman, America slap that woman. Yeah, exactly. And because yeah. America, America is going to end up in the war. Absolutely. You so see what I'm saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so in, in that case, yeah, you, you can relate that to Daniel. Correct. But we as individuals mm -hmm. who are not over, you know, this big body of uh, conglomerate of people, mm -hmm. <laughs> then it is an individual-based thing. Correct. 
So if they, if they can't, if they're sinning in the camp, like in our church, if, right. they, if I'm sinning, it ain't like God gonna curse my whole right. church He's not because curse the whole church. Now, now because it's an individual the person, thing. Every, he, who was that? Uh, I think it was the, the God says all souls was His. Yes. And when He went on down, He said, "But the soul that sinneth, that's the soul that's gonna die." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, and, and I agree with you. Uh, many times uh, we've been placed to. I call it witchcraft. That's when you take my mind and twist it to something else. Yeah. Or when you force my mind to think like you do. Uh, and I hear, heard it almost all my life that these local churches were suffering because some one person was committing sin. And, and I'm thankful to the Lord that my eyes is open. God is not going to judge me by what you did. That's right. Because he said not even he won't even curse your children you, exactly. for the sins of the father. Right. Yeah, and, but, and, but then when he said that, he says to the fourth generation or so, mm -hmm. to them that love me mm -hmm. or to them that hate me. True. So if you got five generations of haters of God, of course, your whole family is going to be affected by it. Mm -hmm. But all it takes is one person in your family to choose in their heart that they're going to love God and they will not be affected by that curse that was in your house. Mm -hmm. I believe it. Just because, remember what he said, he keepeth covenant. And we talked about this a while back. A covenant is different than a contract. A, a contract is an agreement between two or more parties mm -hmm. uh, uh, protecting the one from the other. Right. But an agreement or a covenant is an agreement between two or more parties that bind them together in a, a relationship and a fellowship, which is what he uses. God makes a covenant. We're in the New Testament covenant. We're in the new covenant. We've been bound by this, the blood covenant of Jesus Christ, and we have entered into an agreement, a bond, a family, uh, and all of that because of that. But we can get out, mm -hmm. and all we got to do is stop loving him, stop keeping his commands. Ooh, just like that, huh? Yeah. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's an old song. I can't remember who made it. Right. Uh, um, okay. All right. So, um, uh, yeah, I hear it too. Um, my, my son and my daughters, they, um, you know, they do whatever they want to. Shame on them. It, it ain't going to affect me. Right. It ain't going to affect me. That's their relationship with God. Mm. But whatever I decide to do sinful-wise, it ain't going to affect them. That's my relationship with God. Now, I do don't believe that there's some things that can enter into the right. there are some into the spiritual things that a parent does that affects the child. I am uh, dogmatic to say not so. <laughs> <laughs> not so. No. Get ready, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready. The show this the show is getting ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I say not so because that will go against what God said in Scripture. Like I will say though. No. I will say though, mm -hmm. there are some there are things in the natural, of course, the natural that I could do that will affect all my seed. Mm. All right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But spiritually, I don't believe that God puts a curse over a Jones, a Johnson, or a a um, Quagmire family. Okay, because Grandpa, Grandpa. Quagmire, mm -hmm. you know, 30 years ago, did this particular sin. Mm. Uh, I think it's because then it goes against the individual relationship mm. between God and man. Mm. See, but you, now you 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 twisting what you said earlier. Oh, I ain't twisting it. Oh, you about no. to? Oh no, no, I'm just trying to find out that one mm -hmm. that that one. I need Gibson. Yeah. Where's Gibson? Gibson, get Dr. Gibson. Bombay, somebody, Dr. Bombay. somebody tag Gibson, please. <laughs> Elder Gibson is his name. Yeah. We don't know his first name. <laughs> Elder is, Elder is his first name. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, for those of you who are, who need more of this lesson, we've got to continue, yeah, and okay. we'll fight later. Yes, <clears throat> yes, yes. I think we're at verse 8. Yes, uh, I think I read that old order. Uh, to us mm -hmm. belongs confession, confusion, confusion of faith mm -hmm. to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers because we have stone ascend <laughs> against them. We are stone. <laughs> now, I believe the fathers <laughs> would have to be the ancestors. Uh, Brother Bro Taylor's mentioning the Kennedys. Nope. The Kennedys' life was individual. Oh, that's all physical, natural. Yeah, that's all it, That's all natural, individual stuff. Because I know we, we because no. if, if you look at the Kennedy situation, you got to look at a whole lot of other families who, who's, I, I see people whose sons, three sons died back to back to back, got shot in the streets. Was yeah. that family cursed? Because his mother had three kids, three sons who got shot in the streets. 
-hmm. You know, was that a curse or was that the children's uh, lifestyle? In lifestyle? You yeah, see what I'm saying? Well, it, it, that's, that's, it's, it, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. It's just like trying to, dis to decide whether this man has is a reprobate or not. Mm -hmm. How do you know he's a reprobate? Yeah, you, you, unless God reveals that to you. Unless God reveals, he, yeah. in which I don't think he a will. A lot of stuff is God revealed. Absolutely. We I believe assume it. some stuff, but we don't have all the facts. We don't. We do not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because there's, there's a whole, for the Kennedys that died, there's a whole bunch of them that's still alive. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, one is going to be on my show uh, another couple of weeks. He's running for sure he's running for governor of Illinois, yeah, okay. uh, Chris Kennedy. All right, that's the, that's the son of Robert Kennedy. Robert Kennedy. All right, mm -hmm. so, um, um, yeah, it's a whole, a whole bunch of them still alive. So I don't know if we can emphatically say that that was a curse for the, for the Kennedys. But, I, right. but she and brings up a great ask point. Them that question when yeah, when he gets here, I'm not going to ask him. You have a curse. <laughs> Every tub has to sit on his own bottom. That's Char Charlie, Charlie Harris. That's, that's my sister. That's, that's her. Uh, you were going to say something uh, smart and wise. Yeah, uh, but I, oh, yeah, no, mm -hmm. I'm just going back to the fathers because. Uh -huh. The prince here would be really heads of house. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also used like a military term. Mm -hmm. the, the prince, these are the rulers, heads over a hundred, heads over a thousand. Uh, but I think when he uses the term fathers, that, that word fathers has to be, to my understanding, the ancestors, the original fathers who sinned against Absolutely. them as well. Yes. So Daniel understands that the reason, Daniel has to be very wise to understand why they're in this trouble. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you're gonna deal with this today or not, what? but that Jeremiah 29 and 10 mm -hmm. is, 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 is not in this lesson, but that's what Daniel read. Mm. And then when he read that part, I have thoughts of you, thoughts of this and thoughts of that, this is where that passage of scripture applies. Mm. Not to us. We, it's another one we borrowed. Yeah, we borrowed this, but this was only for Israel of their seven-year uh, land of desolation. Mm -hmm. And God assured them at that time what his thoughts and how, what the outcome was going to be. Mm -hmm. And that's Jan Jeremiah 29, which is what Daniel was reading right before he went into his sackcloth, his ah. fasting, and his prayer. Yeah. Because this 70 years is just about to be up. And Daniel notices that. That's why in the first verse of this lesson, he said, I, Daniel, read the book mm -hmm. of Jeremiah, and he found out that this 70-year thing of desolation. But when you go to where he read it, Jeremiah 10, 29 and 10, you continue down, that's when God says he have these thoughts of us or thoughts of them and, and all that. He was telling what their outcome, mm -hmm. not with us. And that's why it does not work with us because God wasn't talking to us. Ooh, you in trouble for that one. Oh, you in trouble for that one. Uh, I, I brought up the mistranslations and interpretations yesterday on the show. Mm -hmm. You got in trouble. How you gonna do that on non-thirty hours Thursday? Uh, you know, it's, it's Sir Walter Jones show last I checked, <sighs> and uh, and uh, yeah, I want I wanted to bring that up, but I didn't have time. So you brought that up. So that's part two of yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And please, people, st stop asking God to enlarge your territory. You ain't got no territory. You ain't got no territory. Number one, number two, He may need to shrink yours. Yeah, yeah maybe. Because you, you got, got too much. You ain't doing nothing with the ones you got. You got a three-bedroom uh, house. And you in a wheelchair, you can't go upstairs. Right. So why should he enlarge it? Okay, he needs to shrink it. You need to be in one of them studio apartments. And none of those rooms is a prayer room. No, none of them is a prayer room. So you can't be taking somebody's mail right. like we've been doing in, in, in most through the Old Testament and, and say God's talking to us and then wonder why it's not working. Right. Oh, man. So verse uh, 15 says, And now, O Lord, our God... That, our God, there, our go. God, there it is, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand. Mm. I see you bragging here. Oh, yeah. And that's the, every, this, our, everything is dealing with God bringing Israel out of Egypt. Yeah. And the other terror, the other people, the, even the enemies, they still know that that's the God that did this for these people. Exactly. And they keep taking a chance and buying and putting them in <laughs> captivity. But God is doing that, though. He's doing it. Yeah. Understand the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Really? The world and the world, world too? 
Everything belongs to God. Man, everything. Yes, sir. Lord, it says, uh, the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has gotten thee renowned. That means he made his name famous. Yep, I am he. Mm -hmm. As uh, at uh, this day we have sinned, we have done wickedly. He kept kept talking about sin. Wicked, 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 old fish eye fool. <laughs> okay, 16 says, oh, Lord, mm. according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, uh, let thine anger and uh, thy now fury. He's making the petition. Yeah, be turned away from yeah. that city. This is where his petition book begins. He gave a lot of praise and humility yes, prior. And I mentioned before you got here the Lord's so called Lord's yes, Prayer. Yes. Yeah, the alleged Lord's Prayer. Yeah, and all the things that Jesus said in that prayer before he said, then give us this. Right. Okay? Yeah. He began to praise God. Yeah. And then he went back to praising God towards the end. Mm -hmm. Says, so now thine is the kingdom. Is the kingdom. The okay. The Absolutely. So that's what's happening here. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, this is a model prayer. This is a model teaching prayer. teaching us how to reach God. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. soon as he, right in the middle of his prayer, his, he, he gets an answer. Yes. Right in the he middle did. of it. Right in the middle of it. Yeah. Uh, Sherry, yes, uh, uh, <laughs> she mentioned in my wheelchair. I mentioned that. Uh, yeah, he, he does need a smaller house, Sherry does it, in the wheelchair. And it's not even electric. He don't even have one of them stairway things that you go up the stairs and down. And, no, it's just hand. Big, two big wheels in his hands are going across the floor. <laughs> he needs his territory shortened. Uh, get a carpenter in there and cut it in half. Get the other half to Mrs. Crabtree. <laughs> she knows it. it. <laughs> she knows it. Oh Lord, according to all that righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury turn, be turned away from thy city Jerusalem and thy holy mountain, because uh, for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now, therefore, uh, O oh, our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplication. <laughs> He's speaking in third person almost. Mm -hmm. And cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate mm -hmm. for the Lord's sake. O oh, my God, incline thine ear and hear. Open thine eyes and behold our desolation. Look at it. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Check it out. And the city which is called by that name, Jerusalem, I suppose, yes, yes. As, uh, uh, as we do not uh, present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercy. He kept letting God know it's your righteousness. It's about you, Lord. Mm -hmm. It's about you. It's all about you. 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 Mm -hmm. O oh, Lord, hear. O oh, Lord, forgive. O oh, Lord, hearken and do uh, defer not. Don't delay. Don't do it for thine own sake, O oh my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy Amen. name. It's a great one. That's a great one, man. That's yes, a great sir. one. Yes, I don't, sir. I don't, boy, I tell you, I don't know. Daniel knows how to pray. He do. And, and, and he knows how truthful in his prayer. He didn't have nothing. He had nothing. He included himself in it. Uh, he didn't justify himself. He didn't justify the sins of the, his family, his people. He he included himself. He didn't say, Lord, I didn't do it. They did it. Why am I in this mess? He included himself in this whole matter. Mm -hmm. He repented before God. He confessed before God. But then he did something. He says, God, hear my petition or hear my supplication. Supplication is what we call a prayer of petition. In other words, Daniel took the time when he got through glorifying God, he took the time to lay out the details of why he's praying to God. Sure. He gets an answer immediately. Right. Because even the Bible says in the New Testament, uh, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer, supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And I talked about this in my Sunday school video the other night. For some reason, when we were kids, what was it called? We called it monkey wards, Mon Montgomery wards. Mm -hmm. We would go to page whatever. We would circle in bold circle the particular tool we want and sometimes rip it out the page and give it to our parents and say, this is exactly what I want for Christmas. And we expect them to give it to us. When Christmas comes, we got what we wanted. Because, you see what I'm saying? So we gave out our petition or our supplication. When we get to God, who is greater than your parent, greater than your your everybody, greater than you, greater than the president, why do we just sing the song, any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied, when God is saying, I want you to be specific to me. Mm -hmm. I already told you by my word, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and by supplications, let your requests be made known. Mm -hmm. 
So Daniel specifies what it is that he wants God to do. He wants God to listen. He wants God to see, to view. He doesn't want God to delay. He wants God to take away his fury, take away his rage, take away his anger, and cause his people to go back to their land, not for the people's sake. He's talking to the mercy of God. And mercy is one of the characteristics of God. Mercy, faithfulness, great goodness, righteousness, all of these are the characteristics of God. Sure. And he's saying, God, we guilty. We throw our hand at your feet. We're guilty. Everything you do is right. And all I'm asking for you is for your name's sake to turn things around so that your people who bears your name, your city who bears your name, your sanctuary who bears your name, your land who bears your name can use your name with great joy. When you turn this around, then we look good because you look good. Mm. You turned it. Mm -hmm. Come to turn. Yeah, that's a good one, but back. Yeah, you know that one. Yeah, it's yeah. old and old. Hey, y'all, that's the Sunday School lesson. Listen, I'm going to talk about this month about um, human trafficking. Uh, I, I see you, Brony. I ain't been. I wasn't ignoring you. I just was trying to get through this lesson for YouTube people. There are people on YouTube who need to hear the lesson, and I don't want to ignore uh, them because they they got to teach it this Sunday. Y'all, excuse me as I try to fix, fix this right here. Okay, it's, it's really messed up. I don't know why, why it does that. But anyway, uh, this is Human Trafficking Month. Ella Jones, you know anything about human trafficking? Yes, sir. know it very well. It is a catastrophe. Yes, it is. It is an atrocity. Yes, it is. It is something that has been going it's go all around the world. And the government knows it. And the government knows it. They won't do nothing about it. And they, they won't uh, do anything about it. And a lot of times I think there's some underhanded things going on. Oh, yeah. Uh, because even with the drug and the gang thing is going on, a lot of cops, a lot of... Uh, That's all government they, A lot of it is controlled. Yes. And, and, and the whole thing with the guns uh, popping up in places. And sometimes they're the ones putting them in neighborhoods. Yeah, put them in there. You know, because, you know, if you... If if you get rid of crime, you gotta. You you got it, rid of, you get rid of the police. You, you see what I'm saying? You get rid of a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, and it's uh, it's lucrative. And it was said that they snatched these young girls at eight. Yeah. So at eight old, you become a victim. Sure. At eighteen, you become a criminal. Wow. So they snatched them at eight and seven and six. Sure. And when they use them up, then they throw them back out there at, at 16, 17, 18 to prostitute their lives. And then they become, uh, they go from being uh, victims to criminals. And the world knows it. The government knows it. They got more joy, more love, love for animals than they do for people. Yep. I look at it and I said something the other day. I looked at it and I said, sometimes parents... They do, they bring up their children not in the way that they should go, and when they don't like the end result, they kick them out. Mm -hmm. But you brought them up in that way. Mm -hmm. So our government knows about human trafficking, and then they said the worst time that it takes place is when you have major conventions in your town. My Lord. When you have a major convention, like if the Bulls have a game tonight, guarantee hundreds among hundreds of young people will be trafficked in and will be taken out of your home and never to be seen again. Next time you see them, they're on the other end of a camera uh, in prostitution or uh, X-rated videos. And a lot of times it is said a lot of those women on the other side of their video yeah. is on the other side of a gun. That's so true. Ooh, Lord mercy. So be vigilant, I think the word is, uh, especially us who are Uber and Lyft drivers mm -hmm. and Via drivers and DoorDash and uh, many of these uh, uh, things that y'all do as far as ride shares. Look at the signs. Go on Google, go on YouTube and look at the signs. And we could be transporting these uh, trafficking and don't even know it because they're using Uber now mm -hmm. and, and as well as uh, Greyhound bus stations and stuff like that. All right, so let's talk about this. We're going to continue to bring it up all month long. It's the month to recognize it. I got to get out of here. Uh, Curtis Randall is on the wax. He's spinning it. Good man. And he's got some things coming up in the next week. So look look out for the greatness of D. Curtis Randall. And uh, thank you, L. Jones. You're welcome. I appreciate you. And everybody out there in Urban Broadcast Media, Dr. Leon Finney, blessings to you and the rest. This is the Sir Walter Jones Show. There it is. Bruno Scott says, look out for tattoos on the neck. 
especially if it's a tattoo of a man that's on a woman's neck. Uh, that's one of the signs, she says. Now, don't be pulling, calling the cops on everybody who got tattoo on the neck, but she says that's one of the signs to look out for. Yeah. There's so many visual signs, we just don't know it. We, we don't know it. I think every yeah. pastor ought to have a human trafficking class. They need to have it. In this church. Because some of them are in their churches. Oh, yeah. I believe it. That one of that movie we watched, Wanted. Wanted. Help. Wanted, whatever. Mm -hmm. When the man says, I will find you. And oh. I will kill you. Um, he has a, one, he has a special two. case of, uh, <laughs> of uh, skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, snatched, is it? Yeah. No, What's it called? Like that, but, snatched? But, but, Taken. Uh, Taken. Taken. But I blame his wife. Yes. She see, talked him into it. She talked that. him into it. And she, see, when, when, when a, two parents are in a disagreement, that child should never know about it, number one. Right. And that child should never be the center of attraction. And it should never take place in the presence of the child. And if one says no, the other one should say no, whether they agree or not. No should be no. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here's a case where the mother wanted the girl to go and the girl was lying. Right. She was lying. She was. Got out there and got snatched. And the mother wasn't nothing she could do. But the daddy had to go down there and rescue his baby. Mm -hmm. And they say men don't love their children. Somebody better go somebody somewhere and sit somebody down. Somebody go sit down. He said, I will find you. I will find you. Yes. And I will kill you. I will. <laughs> I have a special set of skills. <laughs> I said that too when them boys be trying to date Rebecca. <laughs> Daddy, this is Bobo. Hey, Bobo, I have a special <laughs> set of skills. So I suggest you have her back by 10 p.m. Or I will find you. <laughs> and I will kill you. And I will kill you. I can't help it. It's already 9.30. I can't help it. I can't help it. I told that boy when he took her on prom. You know, they were getting in the car, and they, they, I leaned over in the car. Everybody taking pictures, and I whispered in his ear, mm. young man, yes, Papa Jones, I have a special set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> have my daughter home. It's prime, so he could have her home by midnight. That's fine. I'll give her two more hours. Yeah. That's fine. But uh, you best know that that lapel or the, that that corsage you put on there, yeah. there's a camera in there. Oh yeah. I have a special set of skills. Yeah. Not only that, I got a camera on my tongue. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that, that you think it's a ring? Yeah. So when it <laughs> opened up, <laughs> as soon as the mouth opened, <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I believe that that every church should have some type of human classes or awareness. That's one thing I think that they all should support yeah. because it's humanity. Yeah. It's humanity. And I think it's, I, I got in on the class and I really enjoyed it. I, that's a bad word to say, but uh, it was very informative and I got a lot of information. And, uh, but, and that was in California uh, for that conference that I go to every year. But this year we'll, we will be in Arizona. Prayerfully, they will have some of them classes there as well. And that's when I learned that the government knows about it. Uh, but there are, there are certain people out there who, uh, who work undercover. The pastor's wife, she works undercover. But the people know, and she has a, a shelter where she removes them off the street. All she asks them to do is give that one signal that you're ready. And then they run up to them. They snatch them from the john while the john is not looking. They take them to another location and then they care for us. Sometimes they, they're successful, sometimes they're not. Right. Because sometimes the girl goes back to the jump. She do. Or she sometimes do. she goes back into her habits even while there. It's so much stuff that people... For multiple people, reasons. Yeah, yeah multiple reasons. Pe people uh, get accustomed to some things and it's hard to break. And that's mm -hmm. why the power of prayer mm -hmm. is key. You can talk all you want. You can give classes, you can give conferences and all that. But you've got to be able to have the, the ability, to, the, the authority to cast the devil out, period. And offer them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God. And the word power means the miracle working power to be able to effectively change anybody out of any situation that you have ever been in. Woo-wee. Yeah, he said it. I got to get out of here because I got to get to rehearsal. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 Maurice Gregory says the worst place is truck stops and rest areas. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Tommy uh, says judges, police, clergy, all involved with this. Pastor Rod Parsley had a rescue ministry for human trafficking. Mm. Uh, Brony says look at the, Google the word GEMS, G E M S, GEMS. It is an organization out of New York. Uh, a team from Memphis is going to Super Bowl to do missions and rescue. Uh, so the people are they're, they're out there. Uh, the, uh, Sherry Tucker said the church I went to in Memphis has a special sex trafficking rescue team, but many of them are military. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the information is there. So those of you who are on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you uh, enjoyed the Sunday school lesson, uh, try also to get involved in, uh, in getting the information on this sex trafficking stuff and see if you can get your pastor involved in maybe setting up some type of program. I don't care how many members you got, it doesn't matter. Right. If you got two members, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You and still, one can chase a thousand. That's right. L. Jones, how many two chase? Two, I'm sold at the bottom, so two can chase 10,000. 10, 10,000, put them to flight. flight. Man, that's yeah. a lot, man. Yeah. Can you imagine what three could do? Oh, I was man. never good with math. No, so I, just, I, I can't, I'm a, a special math, yeah. special math. I, yeah, I went to school in that short, short bus. Yeah, real short. Real, real short. Now, it's like you drove it. I did, yeah. Just go. With helmet and all. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go, y'all. Love it, thou. <laughs> See you maybe tonight on something crazy. All right. So, Walter Jones, show. Hit that share button if you can. Uh, say, say hi to my engineer. Say hi. There he is. He right there. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>